technically then a speaker the next day after a petition for disqualification is presented to him in a day or two he can say i'm disqualifying you right yes. technically you can, can, can because he can may do that is that it? he can i tell your lordship you the reason i give your lordship the reason supposing malads the house is proceeding a whip has been issued and 12 people defy the whip just because these are right. live examples 12 people defy the whip no matter what's the need for a notice it's on the record it's like contempt in the face of the court exactly it's on the record somebody files an application that i am seeking your removal so under no matter if you can't deal with it it has one very important bearing you only make that that you know why do you attach the disability on the speaker the moment a notice under 179c can be given the reason is that there is no real power or restraint on the speaker in proceeding with the greatest of alacrity on the disqualification but on the other hand when there is a disqualification that seems to be the logic that's right but on the other hand when there is a disqualification it has to proceed with alacrity otherwise the government will be toppled that malat kindly there are two issues here what has happened what has happened today is malat somebody goes to gujarat goes to assam passes resolutions removes people Mullahs and that is not considered to be disqualified. Well, my learned brother just mentioned, if with his permission, I'll uh, yes. share. It's not always that the speaker will act with alacrity to disqualify. In a given case, he will be uh, he will be sufficiently uh, emboldened. I mean, emboldened, or he may decide not to take a decision. Also, that's right, Mullahs. We have seen that in Goa. We have seen that in many right. other places. It works. It, depends, it, on Mullahs, it depends on who is in power. Exactly. Exactly. So, Mullahs, therefore. <laughs> Want to take an early early decision. Very difficult because very difficult then. Very difficult. In fact, ten schedule each case is a history in itself. So therefore, to formulate a principle with respect to at what time the speaker is to act and lay down as a principle is difficult because but then legislatures and parliament has made rules with respect to when he should act. No, but the discretion is a problem. But in, in fact, one case he will act. The moment they are only concerned with one issue, so, whether at the time of issuance of notice the disqualification to preside occurs. That's the only issue we are concerned with. We are not concerned with any other issue. The problem only answer to it is whenever at whatever point of time the case is finally decided by the speaker, it will relate back. Yes. If it relates back, all this is irrelevant. No, no. The If no. it relates back, all this is because. Even now, no, no, it won't relate. Take in this very case, Mr. Sir. Malaz, in the meantime, decides today if your argument is to be accepted. It always relates. Malaz, but the, in the meantime, a, 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 a legally elected government has been toppled by virtue of the fact that the disqualification Malaz has not been decided. And, and so, Malaz, is it to your, the fruits of the poisonous tree are being enjoyed by somebody else? I'm replying to your submission only. I'm that, sorry. That it should relate back to that. I'm saying the answer. No, no, uh, that's not right. But it will relate back after two years. Relate back after three years. Relate back to this. I argue in the context that your lordship would then allow a disqualified MLA or MP to be able to do something. If it relates back, that is that person who is given the notice is himself disqualified. He can't. That is the context in which is argued that your lordship cannot then allow him to have the status of a person who is given notice. Exactly. Well, the stake in this case, Ekhnath Shinde, who is the chief minister, he is the first person. He is one of the sixteen. How will he is going to relate back? In the meantime, a government has been toppled. So, Malas, the, these are very vexed questions that your lawyers will have to look at Ramon Bebia yeah, and see how to answer. Mr. Mr. Sibal, there is another aspect also of Nabam which has been worrying us. We've been in uh, discussion, uh, which is that ultimately, in any constitutional adjudication, Nabam lays down a principle. Now, we have seen how vexed. it can be in the sense that you know it really depends on the emerging political situation from case to case stage to stage that's true that's true now nabam has laid down a principle which is holding the field until today yes. before we decide to enter upon this to review the correctness of nabam we must also be clear that it strictly speaking arises in a case now one thing which you have to really uh, perhaps uh, assist us on is this nabam the correctness of nabam would arise if the speaker stood injuncted either by the high court or by the by by this court from exercising his powers 
under the tent shed I, I, from, from from if a speaker was a, was injuncted from exercising his powers under the tent schedule until the vote for his removal was taken up right. or he himself says that look in view of nabam i'm not going to exercise my duty. right then somebody else may say that well right. you have to exercise that jurisdiction right. now in our case what happens is that when the matter the speaker perhaps in that sense creates the problem for himself maybe all the political exigency we are not at all saying that in a pejorative sense that's real that's real politics the speaker himself gave only two days notice 25th he said i'm going to give you uh, I, i'm going to give you time until the 27th our court in the light of that said that time to furnish your reply is extended until the 12th of july in the interim your worship may not have looked at that phrase yeah in the interim in the interim now it is extended a trust vote takes place yes the then government decides not to face the assembly it resigns right therefore what impact the vote or non vote of these so, people who were sought to be disqualified by the speaker would have was never tested on the floor of the house no it on the fourth uh, it was tested the resignation the on the fourth it was tested no no, no. The, well, yes well, on the rest the resignation of like the resignation of the chief minister Obviate, obviated a reference, uh, uh, obviated the floor test. Yes. No, no, it happened. Thirtieth. It happened on the fourth. On the on the thirtieth itself. Before Shinde, it happened. Mother, the same thing. No, but on the thirtieth, what happens is this: on the thirtieth, when the floor test is to take place, the government resigns on the twenty ninth. Right. The moment, of course, they, they they got to know that the floor test is going to be held, and there is no stay by the Supreme Court. Now, as a result of that, what happens is that. the consequence of the vote which would otherwise have been cast by persons who were sought to be disqualified on the overall voting pattern never emerges before the assembly so in which case does really nabam rebia does the correctness of nabam rebia fall for consideration yes mr i will i will demonstrate that immediately i will demonstrate that immediately you know and should we go into the validity of nabam rebia merely because obviously very interesting constitutional issues arise because when we decide a constitutional issue in the absence of a factual background of that factual issue, background you let's say that the court is trenching upon something without full facts situation where it's not really a case of an anti defection it's a case where there is perhaps a realignment even a starker case than this where there is actually re- realignment is going on and the chief minister is in an awfully of a minority then knowing the writing on the wall the speaker would want to declare all the others who are on the other side as can't, violate of he can't he can't, he can't unless well, there is a petition before him petition that's that's another yeah petition part of it is what you are saying this application this notice is actually not equal into a petition we are on the interpretation we are on the question of should the speaker restrain or postpone it till some point of time we are only on that question in a situation like this in order to preempt a situation speaker takes up the matter and immediately disqualifies them let me ask that very important question let me ask that mother let's now by the case you see one you can't have a notice before a petition for disqualification that's one part you can only have a notice After the petition for disqualification. Okay, that point is taken. Well, Correct. Go to after the, the notice. Point. Point. Next Now, supposing there is a notice after the petition of disqualification. In that event, everything would have happened already. Suppose there is a. Notice. The facts would have happened already, mother, because the notice will have to be based take, on the legal situation. Where a notice is there. Take a situation. Take assuming for a minute that this twenty instead of twenty first, it's a twentieth notice. Then what is not twentieth, twenty fourth? No, there is a, there, there is a notice on tenth schedule. Yes, already given by one of the minor members. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Then what will happen? I tell you, Lord, is what? Then the, then the speaker proceeds further to disqualify all of them. Why not? Because that's the law. That's why I said under the tenth schedule there is no minority majority issue. There is only a major issue. So therefore, in there is no defence under the tenth. For two days' time, he proceeds to consider. The tenth schedule and immediately he passes. But Malaj, if the if the if if out of fifty five or fifty eight, 
40 are on the other side, it's covered by the 10 schedule because there's no defense. Well, as your logic knows, under the 10 schedule, you are given only defenses. If there's a note, if there's a for the petition for disqualification, there is only a defense available. It was available, Malad, under paragraph 3, one third of the members of the legislative party, Malad, decide to join the other. That was a defense available. We are one third. Right? Now, that also has gone. So there is no defense of saying, I am in majority. This, your logic is now taking a, a hard fact situation that the chief minister has lost confidence. Actually, he's only 50 people are you know, out of 50, 40 are on the other side. That's, I, I listen that against myself. Right. Right. Normalists, they are still subject to disqualification. So what? That's why, as I said, these majorities can't be decided in the legislature. What they'll have to do is go to the party, take over the party, throw him out, and come to the house. So there before this time, no, all, all that, that time is not there. By the time they go to the party to the election committee, because that is why, Mila, that is why this is that is precisely my argument. Therefore, therefore, Mr. Sibyl, your argument, I mean, stretched to its logical conclusion would mean this that even if a, a chief minister of a party completely loses the confidence of his own party in the house, yes, whether he has a confidence or not cannot be tested on the floor of the house, it cannot be. <laughs> Which means that, a, according to you, therefore, the, a chief minister and a, and a, and a willing ally in a speaker, well, look, the speaker yeah. will have to be with them. At least two people will have two to be people with them. have to be. <laughs> there is there. That hope that you can support because the, we are not dealing with a defection. No, no, I understand. I understand. Where you lose your own party, but, I, but then you you can tell you, 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 you have I, lost your own party. I, I tell your lordships, then what will happen? It's very simple, Mr. Then what will happen? Then what will happen is that under the scheduled murders, the speaker will be removed. Without anything, without any, without any other thing, brothers. The speaker will a motion will be a motion will be passed or whatever. The speaker may be removed and another speaker may be installed. But that's another issue. That's the that that situation support. has not arisen. At the moment, are we are brothers on what? From what date does the disqualification of the speaker come? Important question, I'm talking. That's all. Now brothers, let me let me now read something, brothers, the constitution itself. Yes. For a minute. No, I think you have now made your submission yeah. on the reference or the lack of reference. Yeah. I'm sorry. The same thing, whether the reference it means. Right, one now one just one other. Yes. Just one other thing. Um, there's a judgment of the UP Allahabad High Court, 1964 judgment, which deals with this issue, luckily. 64. And I tell your lawsuit what the judgment says. Then I give your lawsuit judgment. Yeah. But there the question arose that a chairman of the legislative council was sought to be removed. Now, at the time when the notice was given, he was there presiding. At the time when a motion was moved, he was still presiding. At the time when the leave was sought to be granted, he was presiding. A writ petition was filed that you could not have presided at the time when leave was granted to move the motion. Right? Leave was refused. So, Manas, the question then arose and the court said, look, under the constitution, under the constitution and the rules of the assembly, he is not required to vacate his chair when leave is sought. Because the resolution only comes up for consideration when a particular day it comes, is, is fixed for its consideration. 